dear colleagues, we are here at the uh, um, Uronco Congress in Gothenburg, and it's a pleasure for, uh, for, uh, for me, for us, to introduce you Dr. Uh, Alberto Bossi from Paris, who's a well-known radiation oncologist and with whom we will talk about the results of the PEACE-1 study. So, um, the PEACE-1 study has, uh, has been published on the, on the Lancet Oncology, uh, quite recently, actually. Uh, it's an international study that was run at 77 hospitals acro across multiple countries and uh, where patients were randomized to receive the standard of care, which was ADT with or without the CETEC cell, eight, uh, standard of care plus abiraterone, standard of care plus abiraterone or eventually radiotherapy and standard of care plus radiotherapy. More or less 300 patients per arm were randomized. So in the first publication of a trial, um, we saw there was a survival advantage uh, for triplet therapy compared to uh, no triplet therapy. Recently, you presented at ASCO GU and you're going to give us tomorrow an insight on the new results, the updated result on the piece one, uh, of a PEACE-1 study. Uh, what are the main new findings and what are the, the, new, the new findings of this, uh, of this study? Of the yeah, trial? yeah, Giancarlo, you say correctly two main questions behind the PEACE-1. When you designed this study with Karim Fizazi 10 years ago, first question, what about the impact of abiraterone? And second question, what about the impact of radiotherapy? Just to remind our uh, public, we are talking about a very specific population of patients, patients presenting de novo at diagnosis with metastatic disease. As you know, there has been a lot of studies going on in this uh, landscape, in this space, and we divide them between low and high volume disease. And the results we first presented last year and were published by Karim Fizadri concern the first question, the abiraterone question, and now at ASCO GU I presented the first results, uh, the only first results, about the radiotherapy question. So does radiotherapy have an impact in terms of a list of co-primary endpoint, radiographic progression fee survival and overall survival, but also a list of secondary endpoints that we have analyzed. And we first concentrated on the low volume population. Why? Because as you said, this is a population of high interest, we have already some data that have been matured and published very recently that you're certainly aware. Data coming from the Stampede trial on the same question and data forming from the Horad trial. And the first meta-analysis that has been done in this population of patients clearly shown that at least for the low volume, metastatic low volume population, there is an impact of radiotherapy on overall survival. So we just wanted to check for ASCO if this was the case also in our study. As you said, some uh, um, altogether uh, 1,200 patients randomized in four arms. And the first results we, we, we show was that in terms of radiographic progression free survival, indeed, the association between abiraterone and radiotherapy confers a very important statistically significant advantage over the remaining three arms of the study. So we really could show that the use of both this agent, abiraterone and radiotherapy, is beneficial to those patients with a statistical important uh, difference. On the other hand, we could not show any beneficial effect in overall survival in this, uh, in this population of patients. Uh, this was, as you can imagine, a little bit disappointing because we were hoping to mimic the results of the Stampede trial. But if you dig into the results, in the numbers that we have presented, you may have an explanation on that. We may discuss this later or if you want I can immediately tell you why. Because this, I guess, is one of the most important questions that you may have. Why didn't you show as the, the, the English have, have done with Chris Parker in their last publication, any difference when radiotherapy is added in terms of overall survival. Uh, there are maybe several, of course. Yes, this, this leads us to the, the second question Correct. We, we wanted actually to, to ask you, which is, uh, based on the results, would you say 
uh, would you suggest this new treatment, so triplet plus radiotherapy, being the new standard of care for uh, low volume disease according to the metastatic disease according to the charted criteria, or do we need some more follow-up to have overall survival? And second question, which is also linked on, uh, to this, is what about high volume metastatic disease? Yeah, that's of course are the central points of it. Huh? So low volume disease, uh, as you know, the meta-analysis that has been done on the uh, on the data coming from the Stampede and from the horror trial on this question clearly show a benefit in a population of patients having maximum four bone metastases with 7% overall survival benefit in this subgroup of patients. If, as we are planned, of course, we will do a further meta-analysis integrating also our data, which, by the way, as you said, uh, our numbers are much smaller as compared to the stampede one, this will probably not impact the general result of the meta-analysis, meaning that the population of patients that may be added to the meta-analysis already published coming from PIS1 will not make any big difference. So my answer to your first question would be yes, I'm sure, I guess, that radiotherapy will stay as an important part of the treatment in the low volume population independently of our own results. Of course, it may be interesting to dig a little bit more, as I told you, why didn't we get those results? And the first explanation, which is a very clear cut one, is that if you look to the standard of care results in our arms, as compared to the standard of care result in the stampede ones, there is a some, somewhat 20% difference better in our study. So these mean that we put the bar too high. Uh, probably intensifying the systemic therapies uh, put the bar so high that even if you had radiotherapy, the likelihood of getting some difference is so small that you can see it, especially when you have such a small proportion of patients. A stampede at 20% less uh, survival data for the standard of care arms, which I remember was ADT alone, very few patients had some docetaxel. So at the end of the day, it was somewhat easier to find a difference when radiotherapy was added. But this can be only one part of the, of the truth. Huh? There may be other explanations. We will dig in our data a little bit more to, to search for that. Second part of your question, what about the high volume population of patients? And this is quite interesting because we had some uh, very precise analysis on, as I told you, secondary endpoints of the study, which were, of course, the toxicity of treatment. We will come back to this later on, perhaps, but also how radiotherapy may or not delay the onset of the castration resistant state. Don't forget, these are patients which are hormone sensitive, castration uh, sensitive and they become castration resistant in their lifespan. Does radiotherapy impact on this or not? And third point, which is probably even more important for the quality of life of, this pa of, of, of our patients, does radiotherapy impact on the onset of severe genitourinary events? And in these, for, as far as these two endpoints are concerned, in our data, there was a significant impact of radiotherapy in the overall population of patients. And this is very important because it may open, I'm very prudent because there is a lot of discussion going on, but this may open new indications for radiotherapy even in the high volume population of patients if you consider that, this, that those two endpoints are important for your patients. And I guess they are. If you discuss with your patients on Monday morning having a diagnosis of prostate cancer and a high volume disease, listen, we can do radiotherapy and you will have a castration resistant state which is prolonged, delayed. delayed, correct, or you will have less local symptoms, I guess you will go for that. Especially because, and you were, you were mentioning this, the global toxicity that we add with radiotherapy is very, very low. Yes, so this is very interesting. So to summarize the answer, it would be yes for low volume Correct. disease and likely yes as well for high volume disease 
due to the effects on um, disease progression, local symptoms, Correct. and to the toxicity. So this leads to the third question, actually. Um, results were, were, were quite were very interesting and quite impressive in this sense because adding radio radiotherapy actually led to a, a not, a not, not to an increased toxicity. Correct. So in a primary non-metastatic setting, of course, if you treat locally, you have an increased risk of complications compared to not treating. Whereas in an advanced prostate cancer setting, this, as you mentioned, may perhaps slow down or decrease what are the symptoms related to cancer, at least Correct. local progression. So beside this, this, do you have in mind any other possible reason for this very low and reduced toxicity that was found in the, in the radiotherapy arm? Yeah, this is a very good question. Uh, for the radiotherapist, uh, I have to tell you that when we designed the study more than 10 years ago, we decided to go for a very standard radiotherapy Temple. schedule. 74 gray, 37 fraction, 2 gray per fraction, which is very standard. Does this imply that we had less side effects because we were very prudent in our uh, choice? Honestly, if I had to design today the, the radiotherapy schedule for piece one, I would go for some hypofractionated regime. As you know, this is nowadays standard of care for uh, a lot of indication in the field of prostate radiotherapy. So why not going for a much shorter uh, uh, schedule of radiotherapy? So this is what I would do today. But 10 years ago, this was not the case. It was not so popular, the idea of going for hypofractionated radiotherapy. This, probably, in this very specific population of patients, uh, I'm sure you, you, you see this kind of patient, they may have very bulky disease, with already some urinary problems, and be prudent with your radiotherapy may have spared them some side effects. And this is why we were surprising enough uh, finding uh, that there is no increased toxicity due to radiotherapy in this population of patients, which is also altogether a very good news for yes, our patients and their family. The price they have to pay to have this radiotherapy in terms of toxicity is zero. Yes, so the local side effects on one side Correct. may be balanced by reducing the local side effects due to disease progression Correct. on the other, which is which is makes totally makes sense yeah. and is uh, is yeah. a very interesting result. So uh, the last question uh, during the trial that was clear in the Lancet publication, and you always uh, stated that during the presentation you had to make amendments yeah. to 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 the study due to uh, the results that were published uh, concerning docetaxel use. Um, to, 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 to use this as, as the new standard of care. Um, several trials then came out with uh, uh, new, new drugs. We now also have, this, we, we have these new drugs in also castration resistance setting, and now recently uh, also at AUA, the, um, the Embark trial was, was published in, in, a, in a recurrence, in a high risk recurrent setting. So, uh, this may be a, a quite obvious question, but I think in clinical practice we still see many patients that are given just ADT. So, do you think there is there is room to give ADT alone, and if if yes, to which to which patients? In the yeah. trial, you included patient, you selected patients with not too many comorbidities. So. What, what are your thoughts on yeah. ADT alone in, in 2023? Yeah. This is a complex question because uh, you're certainly aware we are also favoring some form of de-escalation uh, strategy for patients that may have a lot of treatment and may not be fit for all those treatments. So my, quest my, my answer would be no, there is very, very little room for ADT alone in those patients, number one. But number two, don't forget that you may get patients which for some reason came to a diagnosis very late, and we have seen some of those after COVID. I don't know what is your experience, but they you know, reported the, uh, the, the, the exams they were asked for during the COVID period, and now they come back, and unfortunately they have a locally advanced disease. So patients which are not willing to have chemotherapy, patients which are not willing to undergo several uh, sort of systemic treatment may be 
candidates to ADT alone. I also have to admit that whatever uh, ARTA you would use, the toxicity added by those medications is so low that may reduce even more the use of ADT alone for those patients. Of course, then we may you know, discuss about genetic profiling that will identify and exceptions. Correct, and exceptions. But if there is a big message to, to, to give to our colleagues, I guess this will be the first message. So, of, so to summarize, only patients that refuse yeah. additional treatment and very limited patients that may be unfit, but Correct. in the in the reason of r the really reduced or limited toxicity Correct. of adding some of these drugs, Correct. almost very, very few patients. Okay, thank you very much for being with us, and it was a pleasure to, to discuss the Peace One trial, and uh, thank you for uh, listening to us. Thank you. Thank you, Giancarlo. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure.